Good morning, all. Thanks for joining. So yesterday, after uh, end of the session, uh, within two minutes, I fix the problem. OK, there's a small uh, uh, settings. We need to do that. Uh, but anyhow, uh, let me restart the lab today from the starting onwards so that uh, you can understand everything. And parallelly, um, we will uh, see one of the real time scenario with the EFS uh, uh, mount file system, how you can use uh, one of the project, OK? For a web development project, how you will be seeing that. I'll show you. <clears throat> Let me share my screen. So theoretically, every, everything is same. No changes at all. Only practical things I'm doing once again here. So mainly, I'm going to Amazon EC2. Uh, yesterday, what are the instance I created? First of all, I'm going to delete that instance. OK. This one. This instance will terminate. Parallelly, I'll go to duplicate this window. Now here, I'll go here, a uh, service name called EFS. Now this is a volume I can delete here directly. Just type the file uh, system name and you can click confirm. It will delete. Now it's deleting. Yeah. Permanently deleted. So what are the settings I enabled yesterday? Now I had removed all the settings back. Hmm? So first I'll be creating the file system here. By clicking. Create a file system. I can give the name EFS demo one. And now the virtual private cloud by default virtual private cloud I'm using here and directly can click create. Before click create, you have one, one more option is that customize option. So if you want to see the detailed information about the elastic file system, and you can click customize and you can check here. So now you can see this name of the file system and go to the storage class. Basically, storage class are two types. I already told you standard and one zone. Standard means when the data you have uploaded into the EFS, EFS file system, the data will be stored in more than one availability zone. So that means redundancy is there. The data redundancy is there. In case one availability zone is down, I would be able to access the data from another availability zone. OK, so that's why when I select this, it will show you the data will be stored in the multiple availability zone. Definitely the charges also will be higher. OK, and if you select a one zone, that means the data will be stored in single availability zone. OK, redundancy only within that availability zone. If that availability zone is down, there is no redundancy. The data completely lost. So now this is a one you need to select. And availability zone, you can select the by default one, which one I need to select. So if you select standard, the below availability zone is not mentioned that. If you select one zone in free, one zone uh, EFS mount file system, and it will ask the availability zone because of you need to select one of the availability zone in the region. 
OK, if you selected one year, only the data stored in one year. If you select standard, it will store in A, it will store in B and it will store in C. All the three availability zones, the data will be stored. Any questions here? Next, automatic backups. So this option, once it is enabled, what are the data you have uploading on the EFS file system, the data automatically take the backup by using the automatic backup AWS services is there. OK, it's a AWS backup is a separate service is available. OK, if you check that AWS backup. This is a service which you use to take the backup by EFS. Next, lifecycle management. So if you keep on, the data will be stored in the standard. The charges will be applicable. Suppose if your data is not accessible continuously for 30 days, so that is means infrequent data, right? You're not regularly accessing the data. So those type of data, they can keep it in infrequent access zone so that means a separate uh, entity so it will uh, charge us very less compared to normal regular accessing and irregular accessing data charges will be very less so this is one of the best method which is provided by amazon and enable encryption data at rest so if the data is keep it on the efs file system it is in rest position that means uh, keep on stored on the particular location so in this area, if anybody is accessing the data, the data is encrypted format. So nobody cannot able to open and see that data information. Coming to the performance settings, as I told you, enhanced and bursting options will be there. Enhanced is a, a almost a good performance will be giving. If you need a more performance, like if you have a huge amount of users are getting connected to the particular storage, so you need a more throughput and IO operations. You can select the busting method. And coming to the size of your file system, OK, you can select the elastic and provision. If you select provision, is a fixed volume will be there. If you selected elastic based on your usage, automatically it will adjust at that. This is a overall the step one file system settings. Moving to the next. Now here, multiple availability zones are there. So one step back, if you select the one zone, if I'm selecting the availability zone A, if you click on next, here only one availability zone is there. Because it's a one zone mount file system. If you go back and if you select a standard, then only all availability zone will be showing here. You remember yesterday I created I created a security group in Amazon EC2 Mumbai location. That's a demo EFS. Now I'm going to map the particular security group. Demo EFS. Demo EFS. Demo EFS. I selected here. Then click on next. And this is a file. System policies, uh, it's an optional one. If you want, you can select uh, and if enforcely we can uh, uh, prevent the root access and uh, read only access permissions. If anything you want to select, I'm not giving any options here. Directly click next. This is a final review. OK. And if you want anything modify, you can click edit and modify. Otherwise click create it. So now the file system is creating. Now the file system is creating. Let's come back to the. Uh, architecture diagram. So in EFS file system. In EFS file system. EFS demo one mount point is created. This particular mount point, OK, is connected to multiple availability zones. 
this is availability zone one year. one B and one C. These are the three availability zones. It is get connected. Done. Now coming to the scenario. So this entire environment is in Mumbai location. OK. Your region is. Huh? Your region is. Mumbai. Now the concept is. Now the concept is. I'm going to create an instance. In one of the availability zone in Mumbai region. I'm planning to connect the. I'm planning to connect the. Mount point. So that's the main story. Suppose. This is. Web server 01. This is a web server 01. This is a web server 01. Now I'm going to. Create a server in Amazon EC2 service. See guys, previously the mission was terminated. Even the name also I'm going to remove here. Huh? And this entry will remove after. After 15 minutes. Huh? Meanwhile, I launch a new instance here. Hmm? I will launch new instance here. Now the server name is web01. Now Amazon Linux machine I'm selecting here. By default, I'm selecting the mission. So this mission, which is running with the 2023 the latest volume mission is available and as well as one more model also is available that's amazon line x2 al2 emi kernel 5.10 okay kernel 5.10 so even this volume also can this ami also can select for creating it suppose i'm selecting this now after that i'm going to instance type is a T2 micro is a free tier and key pair yesterday. Whatever the key pair I have selected, EFS Mumbai key pair, that one I'm selecting here. Now the existing network settings, I need to select the EFS demo, which we are configured already. So now coming to the storage. OK, coming to the storage. If you click an advanced option, if you click an advanced option, so by default, the EBS volume will be showing here. So that's a 8 GB by default elastic block storage, which is assigned for operating system storage. And here is a once you click this advanced option here. There is an option called file system is there. 
click on show file system, you can select the EFS file system and FSX file system will be there. Going forward, you learn FSX file system. Now can select a EFS file system you set up. So in EFS file system, you currently you have no file systems on this instance. You must uh, select the subnet before you can add the file system. Subnet. So subnet means what? Subnet means what? That's a very important. So now here uh, the particular uh, network settings. When you click edit, the no preference is there. And based on your connectivity of your EFS file system, if you go to the network, all the three subnets are available. Subnet A, subnet B and subnet C. So this one of the subnet, if you select that, automatically this mount point will be get reflecting here. So that's option one. Now I'm going to select the subnet 1A. Subnet 1A, if I'm selecting that, now if I click refresh, if I click refresh, add shared file system, add a shared file system and I click here, automatically, automatically the file system will be showing here in the list. Okay. And it will connect with the mount EFS file system also. Okay. With this mount point by this file system. You can see this end with the C42. End with the C42. Is that correct? Right. So now and there are two options are there automatically create and attach a security groups. So automatically it will create automatically mount shared file system by attaching required user data script. So even this particular. File system you want to connect it at startup. You can. You can automatically add this guys. Very, very rarely. We are attaching the file system in the starting of the system creation. But some company, some projects. Based on your requirement. They'll create a file system and you need to add manually. So manual method is. You need to learn automatic method is very simple, right? Just we have to select this EFS and the security group subnet and automatically this file system will be showing here. Huh? Now in this case, I'm not adding just removing it. And I'm going to simple. I'm not selecting any EFS file system here. OK, now I'm directly going to launch an instance. So guys, before launching an instance, before launching an instance, so I need uh, two instances I'm planning to create. So for a time taking process, uh, two missions creation, uh, directly I'll create two missions here. I'm selecting two missions and I'm going to launch here. So before Click launch. Any questions about the instance creation? Does we always have to only uh, create two or we can create more instances? 10 also can create, 20 also can create, no problem. Or 20. So it's just like a need on the base on whatever we need, how much. Exactly. OK. Yeah. Now I'm going to okay. launch instance. Huh? Now this will take uh, a while to create a two missions. Please wait. Click all, view all instances. OK. Now, once our I'll make it a web zero two. Once I will be web zero one. OK.
Yeah, the machine is ready now. Let's take a public IP address. And open putty. Based on IP address. Authentication. Click OK and open it. Now click here, accept and enter username is ec2 hyphen user. Now click change settings, appearance, and increase the font size of the server and apply. See guys, now I'm going to install a web services role on this machine. So now you learn how to install web services on Amazon Linux. Hmm? How to install web services on Amazon Linux. Basically, this mission is running on demo FS file system. OK, and edit inbound rule. Hmm? So now when I click add rule, OK, so there is a EFS file system. And uh, NFS file system is required. Network file share port number is required. You can connect from anywhere. And as well as you need a HTTP connection is needed. OK, HTTP connection is needed to access the web page. OK, from anywhere. So now I saved it. Now what we need to do. Now what we need to do in this particular in mode rule, all traffic is there, right? The all traffic I'm going to remove. Not required, right? The specific port numbers are configured, right? So like NFS, SSH, and HTTP and TCP port number connect from anywhere and save the rule. The next concept is I need to go to instance and details, copy the IP address and paste it on the browser and check that. There is no web server as installed on this server. The next step is I need to install the web services role on this computer. So sudo yum update hit enter. OK. So sudo m update means any updates are available for this mission. So no packages marked for update. So that means the mission is up to date is readily available. OK. The next. Uh, the next command is. M sorry sudo. M install httpd hit enter. Now HTTPD is a, a web server. OK, in Linux operating system. Now type Y and accept it. Now HTTPD service is installed. That's it. Your HTTP service is started or not. You need to check that. OK. Service. HTTPD. Status. Now it is inactive. Now it is inactive. Now make it active. OK. Now. Just service HTTPD start. Now what is the message is getting? Clear. So the command is sudo service httpd start now redirecting to this particular service to be start now if you want to check the status now the service is active and running maybe even if your machine is after reboot the service is stop automatically if you want to make it on always 
chk config check config httpd on if you select that okay so the service will be started on the startups now you can check this the httpd service is working or not perfect now the web service is working fine now the web service is working fine if you want to copy any web content the server it has a location is there slash web ww slash html so this is a location where you can copy the files so now can go to cd back so pwd now i'm in users folder cd dot dot now i'm in root now i'm in root i'm going to cd var location cd ww location cd html location so here my web content i need to place here i need to i copy my web web content i place but actually this particular path this particular path i'm going to map to i'm going to map to my efs file system so guys now listen carefully So slash var slash ww slash html. This particular hmm, this particular path I'm going to okay. This particular path I'm going to map to the EFS file system. <coughs> so that's the concept. That's the concept of efs mount file system you are going to learn today but actually the concept is when i go to efs file system every location has one one address is there availability zone a there is a one address huh? right And availability zone B. Another address. And availability zone C. This is address. Okay. So So these are the EFS mount points locations IP address. Now, if you want to connect this, if you want to connect this in this particular server, EFS utils we need to install. EFS utils we need to install. So now I'm going to install yum sorry sudo yum install Amazon. EFS utils. 
Now press Y and hit enter. Now successfully installed. Now successfully installed. Now successfully installed. Clear screen. DF hyphen T minus H. If you hit that, there is no mount points which is currently available. What I'm trying to do, this will be, I'm getting connecting to this particular reference point so that I get able to communicate this EFS demo one with this IP, which is getting connected here. Okay. So for understanding purpose, I'll make a somewhat Coming back. Now here, here is attach option. Go to by a mount point. Which one you want to connect? You want to connect from availability zone A, availability zone C and availability zone B. So like that I'm connecting from availability zone A. So because my instance is running on availability zone A. OK, that's the reason I'm going here and I'm copying this IP address. So when I copying this IP address, I don't want to give this path. I don't want to give this path. Either we can come back here and you can take this IP address also, this path also. And also you can copy this path. OK, so now I'm copying this up to here. Up to here I can copy. Huh? No EFS. No EFS. Space. Which path I want to map it? Slash where? Slash. WW. Slash. HTML. Once I hit enter. Once I hit enter. This particular path is getting connected successfully. So that means this path is connected to this path. What are the data? If you keep it here, the data will be stored in this particular storage. Now you can run the command. So you can see this. OK, you can see this. The NFS4, which is get connected. Which is connected. Right. Are you clear? Sir, uh, I have one question. So yes, basically please. in availability zone one, we have the actual HTML uh, content, correct? Mm. Mm. But what we are doing here is we are connecting the other. We are basically connecting the other two availability zones, mapping to those uh, availability, availability zone one mount point. Is that what we did? No, 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 no. I'm creating only one server. That server particular path is there. Is a, a root folder of the website. That part I'm going to enable it in the shared folder location. So if you put any data in where WW HTML Web01 server, the data will be directly reflecting to on this DFS demo01. Okay. If any other server which okay. is get connected with this EFS demo from any of the reference point. Automatically, what are the data we have uploaded in the server one? We can get from the server two, server three, server four, like that. Okay. But data is, is residing in one. Data is residing in one. Ah, data one. is residing in one location. It's a shared location. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. I'll show you the demo. Don't worry. <laughs> you will get okay. a complete uh, idea. Okay. Complete idea. Okay. 
because of it is a small concept only, but understanding level somewhat uh, you need to think. OK, but you're you're absolutely you're expecting the output is very, very important. OK. I'll show you with a proper scenario. I'll show you. OK. Yeah. Now the mount point is connected, so come back here. The page is working fine. Huh? Now what I'm what I'm trying to do, I'm going to upload a, a new website. I'm going to upload a new website. Huh? I'm going to upload a new website uh, in this particular server. Hmm? So for that reason, for that reason, I'm going to uh, google.com. And here I can type a free HTML websites. There is a website name called free CSS.com. I'm going here. And I can download. Huh? So some application I'm going to. So fit app this particular website I'm going to deploy here going to download. Which is downloaded in my system. Fit app. Now I'm going to right click extract. Files. Click OK. Now in this page. The data is available. This copy this data I need to copy into. The web server. How to do that? There is a, a software is available. Win SCP software. You can please download from this website winscp.net. You can download and install it. It's a very simple software. Mostly I in my system it is already available. Now I just connected. I open my winscp software. This is my local system. I'm going to connect my remote system. What is my remote system IP address? Huh? What is my remote system IP address? This is the public IP address. And I can paste this. Go to advanced. And here. SSH authentication. And select the private key file. Now can go to. desktop keypads efs keypad file click ok login yes it will ask username ec2 hyphen user i successfully get connected right now it's by default it is landed it to home slash ec2 user go to root folder here slash where ww HTML. So in this location, I need to copy the content. So where it is available, it is in my users folder. And here in the downloads, this is a fit app. All this content, I just copy and uh, paste it here. But actually, I don't have uh, permissions to copy this because of uh, I don't have a uh, right permission is there. OK, so what should I do? Hmm? Uh, I can go to the command sudo chmod777 current directory. Now I have given the permission chmod777 full permissions are provided. Now I'm going to refresh this console. Happen. 
read write execution is there, right? Oh, 755 is only is available. Oh, can I make it 777 permission for all the people? No, I don't have permission. Slash where slash www slash html. Now. Ah, now it is changed. Now I can check this property. Now it's a triple seven. Now I can go here. And I'm copying all the content. I paste it here. Now when you paste the content. You can go. OK. This size will get increase. Now all the content was placed successfully. Now you can. Go to this page. Refresh here. Now fit app mobile app is working fine. Hmm? Now fit app. Is working fine. Now it is running on which server? It's a web zero one, but actual data is where it is available. It is available in the. It is available in the. Where? It is available in the bound point. OK, so now you can check this. The concept the data was connected like this. Now you can check this. The size was. Increased now. Hmm? Now the data is. Uploaded into this location. This is pointed to. DFS location NFS mount point. It is get connected. So what is the next concept is I'm going to connect uh, the second server. This is my second server. So I'll keep it in the left side, the screen. And I'll create a duplicate. I need a new session. Now I connected. Let me increase the font size. So this is a web zero one and this is a web zero two server. Now I can check this. Web zero two server. We are connecting here. No web services. Now what we need to do? We need to install the web services role. Sudo yum. Update nothing to update here. Let us version. Sudo. Yum install. So m install. Httpd. Now it is installing. I think. Uh, you can see this. I'm press Y. Had installing now. Perfect. Now clear screen. Now we need to check the service. Sudo service HTTPD status. Now it is dead. 
Now we need to start the service. Now we can check the service. It is active. Now you can go to the browser and you can check this. The data is available. So that the default web page. Come back. In the left side, now can type ls. See guys, all the mobile data is available. All the mobile data is available here. That's why the web page is working fine. Now coming to this server, cd dot dot, cd dot dot. Here screen, ls. Now can go to cd var www slash html. No data is there. Now what I'm trying to do, we are going to install sudo m install Amazon hyphen EFS hyphen utils. Why? Now clear screen. Clear screen. df hyphen t space hyphen minus h. Sorry. Command is wrong. No NFS is connected. So what we need to do? I need to connect the CFS demo. Attach. Copy here. Copy here. I'm maximizing the screen. Slash where www HTML. Now successfully connected. If you type ls, the cd space dot dot. Now ls cd space. See guys, previously there is no data in this particular location. Now, once it is connected, this mount point in this server, OK? 0 to server. Now web content is readily available. Now come back this. You refresh this page. Now bit app is working fine. So where this data is coming from? Where this data is coming from? Mount the web zero one exactly. No, no, no. Uh, it is from the EFS file system. It's a file okay. system. Okay. Yeah. This is actually a live scenario. The EFS how will be maintained or managed. I hope everyone is clear now. Huh? So Rajesh, sir, I have one question. So basically, the phys basic the physical entity is one file only. Even web zero one was using one mount point, like pointing to that, and then we uh, connected web 02 to that uh, EFS through mount point, correct? Exactly, exactly. So we just we need to configure the environment. And. Already the web content is updated here. 
So once once we are established the connection, then automatically data will be reflecting on this page. So next time, if one server the data is updated, and both servers the changes will be affected. Do you want to see that? See. Now this is a server one I connected, right? This is the index.html. I click edit. Wait. Edit with Notepad plus plus. Now the change is doing from the one server. Now can take update from under the server also automatically. So, it app. I'm just giving the name fit app demo and just save the file. Going back. Maybe home page, I can change it. Home, right? I'm changing the home. Demo. See guys, home demo is updated in the server one. Now I can go to server two. Automatically this reflection will be there. OK. So in one server, if you update it, the changes will be automatically updated in another location also. We don't want to update it in 100 servers. In one area, you can update it. That's why be careful. In case of you're doing mistakes, it will reflect it in every server. Everywhere, they're following the same kind of method, guys. Any other questions, please? Sir, in uh, last session, uh, maybe I missed. You would have explained in first part. What was the mis like? Uh, how? What was wrong that was being done that got corrected when we're creating uh, ESS? Actually, better don't. <laughs> uh, if you want, I said a link also is there. You can check that. Uh, okay, I was okay. not running that uh, command of. Uh, Amazon EFS mount file system uh, utilities I was not installed. OK, OK. So yesterday okay, video, you can watch it, uh, what, wherever the mistakes I did. Then yeah. you can continue this video. Otherwise, you can yesterday video, you can watch only the theoretical concept. I'll inform okay. that where I started the lab. So you can stop that video. Do not watch that. So you can continue this video. So it will give you the clarity, OK? Got it. Got it. Even I'm also not satisfied as today class for the lab. OK, so no, how can you that's, fine, you? Sir. that's, that's that, <laughs> like in. Uh, it happens to us every day, like 
Yeah, there can be some small things. Which we if you're practicing, definitely will be there. Yeah. So because of uh, maybe overconfidence, <laughs> okay, we can do that. We can go. Maybe one command also will give a, a wrong uh, output. Okay, it will. It happens sometime. Okay, every day is not possible to practice uh, uh, before coming the session, right? Okay, so already we did many sessions, hundreds of sessions, uh, maybe um, one or two points we are missing. Uh, actually, the problem is I'll maintain separate notes. Okay. I'll definitely maintain notes. I'm not continuously typing these commands and uh, in front of you. No, I'm also referring the uh, separate notes. OK, uh, in a separate screen and uh, based on the tell. Sometimes unknowingly my typo errors. Maybe unfortunately the lines will get deleted. OK, maybe one or two lines is deleted or maybe some spelling mistakes, some space mistakes, typo errors. Uh, even sometimes my son also will be operating my system. <laughs> He's a two years old. <laughs> maybe okay. I don't know. Maybe myself or my son was removed that line or maybe modified. I don't know really. OK, absolutely. So fine. It not, not a problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not a problem. Hmm. I, I just wanted to know. So basically that util part we need to do. Correct that. Yeah, util part you need to do that. So this video I clearly explain end to end the concept I explain. OK. Fine, That's why I deleted all the videos and uh, EFS mount system. Then I created from the scratch. OK. Perfect. And I given the output and uh, the how the data will be changing. That also explained here. You can check. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions before ending the session today? No. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, don't forget to stop your instances. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, guys. You can stop the instance directly. Go to Amazon EC2. Select Web01, Web02. Stop the instance. So I'm, I'm going I'm going to use this server for other purpose in next two days class. Uh, you will get a complete idea. OK. So do not delete that missions if you're created. Huh? Thank you guys.